Man, my mullet is very fuzzy right now. I just washed it. This is this is what a clean mullet looks like. I need to put like product in it or something. What's going on folks? Arm and Hammer here and today we're going to be talking about the events for the Mayhem Classic. That's right, Rich Froning is putting on his own tiny little sanctional in his hometown of Cookville, Tennessee. It's going to be going down at CrossFit Mayhem, which is a pretty pretty sweet facility. So I'm really excited to be out there. I'm going to be going out there this weekend. I'll be there uh, throughout the event as well as a couple days afterwards to catch up with a few of the athletes and uh, residents of Cookville, Tennessee. A couple people you may have heard of. I don't know. Some pretty well-known CrossFit people live out there. But either way, as of right now, we only know a handful of the events that the athletes are going to be putting themselves through. And we're going to go ahead and talk about those. And you'll have another video on Friday morning taking a look at the field of the competitors. So it's a relatively small field. There are no teams. It's just an individual competition. Overall, I think there's a lot of really interesting and sort of unique things about the Mayhem Classic. And uh, I guess we should just go ahead and get into it. Let's go ahead and start with the schedule because there's a couple things on here that are, are really interesting. Here's the schedule off of the Mayhem Classic Instagram. Saturday, gates open at 8 a.m. and it starts with event three. So that means there's probably going to be some stuff going down on Friday, everybody. My guess would be probably events one and two. We'll talk about that in a second. But either way, event three is going to run uh, through the mid-morning. Event four is going to start around the midday, and event five is going to be in the afternoon here. Now, the second day of competition just has two events listed, event six and event seven. Looks like event six is going to be running through the morning to the early afternoon, and then event seven is going to close it out from you know the early afternoon until the mid-afternoon, early evening time, which I'm assuming is just in time for them to wrap it up early so they can get the podiums done and get everyone their medals and cash and all that stuff. But either way, the interesting thing to look at here, two, two pieces to pay attention to. First off, event three is our first event on Saturday morning, which means there's going to be two scored events on Friday. Not a big secret there. The Good Dudes events, that's going to be a Rich and Mr. Dan Bailey and Mr. Josh Bridges. They're going to be doing kind of like a showcase themselves, so they're going to do their own little competition. And that stuff is going to be showing up as well with their own little final event. It looks like after everyone else is finished, which is pretty cool. So like the last little bit on Sunday looks like it's going to be, you know, back to back to back exciting heats, like the women's final heat, the men's final heat, and then this good dude's final heat as like a little showcase. So it's going to be really fun. I think they're, I think they're doing interesting things there. Part of me guesses that this is because Rich doesn't want to take like three days off of working out. He still wants to train and, and get some sweats in. Knowing Rich, I imagine it would drive him absolutely bananas if he couldn't work out for a few days in a row. So it kind of kills two birds with one stone. Like gets his buddies together, he gets to work out, it puts on a good show for everyone that's there, as well as people on the live stream. Speaking of the live stream, let's go ahead and talk about that because there will be a live stream as this really big graphic says live stream. So the Mayhem Classic is going to be live streamed on Mayhem's YouTube channel. So if you are not one of the several hundred thousand subscribers they already have on there, you might want to become one or just at least like bookmark the page so you can check it out. Uh, the schedule for the live stream is Friday night from 6 to 7 p.m. That's just the good dudes doing their thing. I think the first event of the good dudes hanging out is going to be there. Saturday runs from 9 to 6. Sunday runs from 9 to 6. That's about relatively normal, I would say, for this type of scheduling. That also kind of falls in line with the training type schedule that I know Rich keeps. So it would make sense like it it falls within a regular competition schedule. It falls within a regular training schedule. It just it just kind of fits, right? And you can catch it um, on their YouTube channel. It seems like they're doing some really cool stuff with the scoring. Uh, I heard they're going to have live scoring. I think they just announced something like that on their Instagram. They're going to have some live scoring going on. I heard that they're going to have the little uh, scoring, uh, the timer buttons at the, at the end of uh, each lane so that you can kind of see when each athlete finishes. 
fingers crossed they add some sort of like fireworks or smoke machine to just really amp up the excitement whenever someone finishes an event but either way that's going to be on the live stream now let's go ahead and talk about the events now this is not exactly an event announcement but this is rich's instagram and since he is the mastermind behind the mayhem classic i think we should be paying attention to it he says you have been officially warned at mayhem classic and then in parentheses as if it were an actual secret and the picture here is uh it seems to be someone who is donald duck in it so uh shirt shoes no pants but also a go ruck with a 30 pound go ruck ruck plate ruck inside of it so if i were to guess my guess would be that there are going to be some sort of outdoor rucking situation going on there and since they're going to be in the eastern tennessee mountains and forests and you know we've seen a couple of different situations in which rich has taken people out into the woods to do various things i'm not 100 percent sure it's going to be like a trail thing but i can definitely take an educated guess that it's going to be a brutal and savage and probably very very painful event that is going to uh give everyone tramp stamp tattoos of you know worn down abrased skin from their go rucks so either way I don't exactly know what that event is. I don't think they're gonna be announcing it until at some point, probably Thursday night. I think they're they're bringing in all the athletes for kind of like a briefing um, before the event kicks off. So they'll be announcing what the exact event is there. I suspect it's going to be pretty vicious as most of these events do look to be pretty vicious. I guess the real question is, what is the combination by which this is both events one and two or is there a second thing that's going on as well or is it maybe like the half marathon row that we saw at the crossfit games uh, quite a few years ago where the first 2k was its own event and then the remainder of it the full half marathon was its own event um, i don't know how he's going to do it but rich is very very good at programming competitive events like this i suspect it's going to be pretty brutal and also I would guess impossible to watch because it's not listed on the live stream. Outdoor streaming is uh, exceptionally difficult to pull off. And for those of us who are going to be out in Cookville, I don't know if it's a smart idea to try and like trespass onto someone's land out there to try and catch a glimpse of somebody like struggling to walk by with a go ruck or something so i just wouldn't suggest trying to be there uh i'm hoping that we'll be able to keep track of it somehow on social media uh again that's the type of thing that you know i think would be expected for an event this caliber and i think that's the type of thing they'll probably be able to pull off so that's the super secret no one really knows what's going on with it event number one and two so here is event number three 100 foot handstand walk, 18 dumbbell squat snatches, 100 pounds, 70 pounds, 100 foot handstand walk, 14 dumbbell squat snatches, 110 pounds, 75 pounds, 100 foot handstand walk, 10 dumbbell squat snatches, 120 pounds, 80 pounds, 100 foot handstand walk. So in the video where they uh, announced this, where Rich is talking about this, it's on their YouTube channel, by the way, the Mayhem YouTube channel, where also the live stream is going to be. But he talks a little bit about the inspiration behind this workout. He talks about sort of the old regional workouts that combined the snatch and the handstand walk, sometimes into separate events, sometimes into the same event. There's uh, the old dumbbell snatch workout that had, you know, very, very heavy dumbbell snatches. It was the first time we ever saw the 100-pound dumbbell snatch show up at regionals. That, that was uh, paired up with a shuttle run. So there's kind of like a history behind this as well as some of the other events that he's programmed. But the interesting thing to me about this is that, one, it's... It, it along with every other workout is like the most rich froning workouts to ever work out it's it's just all stuff that you know for a fact that he has done over the past 10 years the tens of thousands of workouts that he's put in over the past 10 years and this is exactly the thing that someone like rich froning would be really really good at because it is handstand walking which he is exceptionally good at as well as heavy 
kind of skill-based and mobility-based snatching. So the 100 pound, 110 pound, and finally the 120 pound dumbbell, if you haven't played around with a 120 pound dumbbell, it is a beast. It is a monster of a dumbbell. Now, this is a much different time than way back in the day when the 100 pound dumbbell showed up and people were barely able to move it. So I suspect that the best athletes, which many of the people here at the Mayhem Classic are, they're not gonna have too much trouble with these weights. I like the fact that the women's weights are also competitively high and they're not erring on the side of lower. In fact, I would say they might be erring on the side of slightly higher, but then again, Rich tends to train with a bunch of badasses, so it does not surprise me that he's using a little more of an aggressive scale. And it makes sense. I mean, comparatively, it's a little bit lighter at the heaviest end than it is at the lower end. But either way, I think this is a really interestingly well-programmed workout uh, as a test to kick off a weekend of fitness. Now on to event four, it is a chipper, 25 burpee box get overs at 48 inches, 50 slash 40 calories on an assault bike, 50 GHD sit ups, 25 bar muscle ups, and then back up. So 50 GHD sit ups, 50, 40 calorie on the assault bike, and then 25 burpee box get overs. Now the burpee box get over, that's another classic Rich Froning thing. He has uh, lots of these um, jerk blocks in the gym at the barn and usually is not using them to jerk off of but instead is using them either as like a platform for sandbags uh, or heavy d balls or for these burpee box get overs and it's it's pretty savage i mean i've seen again this is this is just a classic workout that you know rich has done uh, at least these combination of movements a hundred different times in a hundred different ways and when he says that it's going to be a classic chipper and it's going to hurt you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be gullible to believe him. You know what I mean? You can look at this and just say, all right, it's burpee box get overs over a four foot box and then an assault bike for a few minutes, GHD sit ups. So this entire thing has a hundred GHD sit ups, 25 bar muscle ups in the middle of it all, a uh, hundred or 80 calories on the assault bike and 50 burpee box get overs over a four foot box it's gonna add up and it's gonna be really interesting to see how strategy plays into this sort of thing. If you're feeling fresh, are you gonna go for a really big set on your bar muscle ups to start off with? You're gonna break it up smarter or earlier. Which athletes are gonna have the midline endurance to be able to hang through the GHC sit ups without falling apart? Is a pacing issue gonna cost someone the lead when it comes to that final round of the assault by calories? There's just a lot of really, you know, sort of race centric movements here where you know an inch here a little bit too fast on one of the previous movements here and you have a really exciting race that can you know someone overtakes another person on a movement or gets overtaken by another person on a movement i think this is this is fitness racing at its at its peak when it comes to you know chipper programming it's really really solid stuff here event five is another very hurtful look into the mind of Rich Froning as a programming guy. 150 foot lunge walk with dumbbells, 30 sandbag cleans, 150 pounds, 100 pounds for the ladies, and another 150 foot lunge walk. So basically what we're looking at here is a lower back and posterior chain uh, destructo meter, right? They're gonna be lunging through, getting those glutes and hammies nice and tight, and then they're gonna have to rip that sandbag uh, up and over their shoulders a whole bunch of times. And then if that wasn't enough, you gotta lunge it back, buddy. So there's a little bit of, of the sort of showmanship of moving through the events. We've seen that with all the events so far that, that they've announced the three, four, and five all have some sort of like a movement. You know, it's the handstand walk or it's uh, up and down the chipper. So you're going out and back across the floor or it's something like this where you're actually lunging across the floor, you know, and doing some movement and then either lunging back or maybe there's like different lanes, but either way, there's sort of like a, a race involved in this workout. And this is another one of those things where I can envision Rich having done some version of this. My gut tells me that there was a version of this workout that was much more leg destructive. Uh, I suspect there was a version of this workout that probably was lunging, heavy sandbag cleans, 
and maybe heavy sandbag squats and again lunging. I, I imagine that there was you know, a version of this that was just maybe a little too spicy spicy on the quads uh, for what they were trying to do in this specific workout or within this specific time domain. But this is gonna this is gonna really be one of those events where efficiency on the sandbag cleans and who's gonna be able to grit through the lunges on that second set. And finally, we have event SACE. Number six here, that's the last one that's been announced as of right now. God knows I'm sure I'm gonna publish this and, and you're gonna announce like three more workouts right off the bat, but either way, here's event six. This is what we know so far. 10 rounds of 50 or 40 double unders with a Zeus rope and two legless rope climbs where uh, the men do two legless rope climbs each round, the women alternate with one legless rope climb uh, and then two legless rope climb the following round. So they're doing one and two, one and two, which I think is a really good way of scaling legless rope climbs uh, for the capacity um, and like the time domain they're trying to get on the women's side, right? And this is an event that you know Rich talks about this in a little video that they announced on the you know with the Mayhem YouTube channel about how he constantly is getting asked about the rope from 2010 and how you know he failed this rope climb in 2010 and then he came back in 2011 and he you know he was able to like redeem himself and win the very first event that had the rope climb in it and so you know I, I think there's you know there's a history to Rich and the rope climb I can tell you right now with with my experience. Uh, you know, just having eyes over the past 10 years and watching him do, you know, a bunch of different types of movements. I don't think rope climbs are going to be an issue for him and anymore, ever again. Never have been, never will be ever again, I'm pretty sure. Uh, he does legless rope climbs constantly. When I was there right before the games, he would do workouts with legless rope climbs where he would double the number of legless rope climbs for himself versus what everyone else in the gym was doing. He's just very, very confident and competent with that movement. So it doesn't surprise me that we're getting legless rope climbs. It also doesn't surprise me that we're getting an event that pairs it with a shoulder movement. Now, I would have expected him to use maybe a more, I don't know, like a, a more aggressive shoulder movement, like a barbell or a dumbbell or something. However, do not sleep on the Zeus rope. That heavy rope definitely adds up. You know, doing 500 double unders or 400 double unders with a heavy rope, your shoulder's gonna be tired, your forearm's gonna be tired. If you're really bad at it, your biceps are gonna be tired, your lower back is gonna be tired. And guess what you need to do legless rope climbs? You need your biceps and your back and your shoulders. And so that's gonna be a, a really telling sign to see who's efficient with their double unders. The first half of this workout is probably not gonna be much to look at. We'll see some separation, but my guess is it's really gonna come down on the men's side, especially into rounds seven, eight, and nine to see who exactly has you know, the capacity to do this type of a workout. And on the women's side, we'll see a separation, I think a little bit sooner because of the fact that it's that many legless rope climbs. However, the scaling of doing the alternating one and two legless rope climbs is a really unique, maybe like an elegant way of making sure that there's not gonna be, you know, a massive spread right off the bat. And it's gonna ensure at least a little bit of you know a competition amongst the the women competing throughout the first half of the workout and again just like the men it's going to separate out after the fat after the first half of the workout you know rounds seven eight we're going to start seeing you know the the best of the best sort of separate themselves from everybody else so there you go folks that is everything we know so far in terms of the events for the mayhem classic now a couple things to know i'm going to be out there like i said earlier i'll be there uh, i arrive sometime midday on friday my guess is if there's going to be events on friday they're probably going to be during the day which means I'll, I'll probably miss in terms of being there in person i'll probably miss one or both of the events that the athletes are going to be doing since they're likely again just based off of like that go ruck thing they're likely to be outdoors they're likely to be on private property and i am very unlikely to be trespassing on a tennessee landowner's private property just to watch some people exercise so i'll figure out exactly what's going on you know once i get you know wheels down and, and tell you guys exactly what's going on uh you know try and relay as much information as possible but either way expect to be keeping track of what's going on at the mayhem classic throughout the day on friday 
through social media, either theirs or mine. Uh, the evening is that 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. The good dudes are throwing down on the live stream. I, I suspect that's gonna be a lot of fun to watch. I'm definitely gonna be there for that. And then throughout the weekend, I'll be giving you guys some updates, catching up with some athletes, trying to keep you know tabs on on who's got the uh, who's got the spot you know in their sights. There's a lot of really good athletes. It is only an individual competition, which is you know really refreshing to see. I think we saw a, a only individual competition last season as well. This one happens to be put on by one of the best CrossFitters of all time, and also probably the best single like team CrossFitter ever. So the fact that he's just focusing on individual programming is, is pretty cool to see. But either way, folks, I'm really pumped that I get to be out there. I'm going to be hanging out with uh, the Ramwad crew uh, over the weekend, which is going to be really, really fun. Uh, I've got some time set aside with, um, you know, Matt and Rich and uh, a whole bunch of other people. Uh, Sammy just launched the Feeding the Frasers, you know, some merch and uh, apparel type stuff. So I'm going to hopefully learn a little bit more about that. It's just going to be a great weekend. Cookville is always a really fun place to be. I'm glad that I get to kind of be like your surrogate out there, and I hope you guys enjoy the content that comes out on the channel. Remember, folks, there's a whole lot going on in our sport. It's easy to miss some of the most interesting and exciting stories. That is what I am here for. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, like, share, subscribe, tell me what's up. Maybe, you know, forgive me for the fuzziness of my mullet. I washed it, which I should never do. I, like, never wash this thing, but I washed it today, so I'll just put some... I'll put some product in it before I go to Cookville. <laughs> See you later, folks.